Hello, Marcel here, and today I will show you the new animated material type feature and the updates we've made to the curve physics simulation in Lucid plugin for 3ds Max. So to start, I just set up a quick scene where I have a ground plane, and I created a slightly more interesting object from the extended primitive dropdown of 3ds Max, which is a torus knot. So this torus knot has been assigned a rubber preset, and I just changed a couple of settings, which is the cluster stiffness. I set this to 0.02, and I changed the fall off to 0.2. Let's turn off show as particles for now and if we simulate we can see that this is behaving like a nice soft object with the current settings. What I want to do is to actually change this object from being a soft body into being a fluid simulation maybe halfway through my timeline and then I want it to change to something else at the end. This has not been possible before so you are kind of stuck with each object having only one body type throughout the whole simulation but now this is possible because the body type of your objects are actually animated. So let me demonstrate this by first scrubbing to the frame at which I want to convert my body type. Maybe I'll set it to frame 30. And at this frame, I'm just going to set a new key. I'm going to change my body type from soft to a fluid. One important thing to note is that right now the keys assigned to this parameter are going to be interpolated between the fluid parameter and the soft parameter, which is not what we want. We don't want a smooth interpolation here. Rather, we want it to jump straight from soft into the fluid. To change this, I can right click on my key and select the torus knot material type value. And then for the in and out points, I just change this to step value. And I'm going to keep this dialog open for now. I'm just going to put it off screen. Maybe at some other frame in the future, I'm going to again change my object type, but I'm going to change it to inflatable object. So maybe at frame 54, we will change our fluid object to an inflated object. And just as before, I will go back to my little interpolation key dialog here and I will click on this new key and also set the in and out points to be step instead of smooth interpolation. So I don't need this anymore for now. I'll get out of my simulation and let's first preview what's going to happen by just scrubbing through the timeline. So we have our nice inflatable object going at first and then at frame 30 it gets converted into fluid which starts spilling out onto our plane and then at frame 55 this fluid will be converted into an inflated object and we can see that it is kind of behaving like a large piece of cloth, which is exactly what we want. So now that we have this done, let's just get out of the simulation, maybe extend the timeline a little bit to get some more of our animation recorded and just press the record button and let it happen. So the scene was recorded and the simulated object was recorded as a mesh which is animated throughout our timeline. And if I just scrub and play back the animation, you can see that all of this data is recorded and we can just smoothly scrub it back and forth. This is animating material type of simulated objects. It is really this easy and this is all you have to do, which is set keys on body type of your object. One other cool thing that you might notice here is that as you are scrubbing the timeline, the actual settings for the body type of our objects changes and as they change we can see the user interface update to display these new parameters and all of these new parameters are also animatable and you can go back and forth and change their values throughout your animation as well. So you now have the freedom to do this. For the second part of the video I want to show the improvements that we've done to our curve simulation and to demonstrate this let me just create a quick curve that has some predefined shape. The basic idea behind the change in this build is the fact that we have changed the way that curves get simulated from being a rigid chain of connected particles into being an actual soft body object represented internally in flex, which allows for more control and better shape preservation of your curve dynamics. So I have created this spline quickly and I'm just going to apply any preset to it. It doesn't really matter. If I go back to my settings, you can see that the preset and body are grayed out because they don't matter. The curve settings are now different from the previous build. And if I just check show particles, and start the simulation, you can see how the curve looks at the start of the simulation. Initially, it's just going to fall down and to fix it, I'm going to go into the line options and select one of the beginning vertices of the curve. And now that it is fixed, it is going to hang from this vertex. So this is the default setup that you get right away after adding the curve preset. And I can change the setup by modifying these parameters. For example, I can change the slice particles to a different value like three. 
And when I do that and press simulate again, you can see that now we get a cross section consisting of three particles instead of one. And this is going to preserve the shape of our curve a lot better. You can see that it no longer stretches out and instead it is preserving this curl that we have created in our initial spline. Other options allow you to change the way that these particles are generated along the curve. For example, I can change the rotation along the curve to a non-zero value like 0 0.1. And when I do that and start my simulation again, you can see that it adds a little twist of the particles along the curve length and the simulation is going to also change as a result of this and it will take this twist into account. Other parameters we can change are things like the spacing of the particles so I can set this to a non-zero value like 1 and in this case the particles are going to be slightly more sparse. If we change it to another value we can get even more sparse particles and if they are more spaced between each other the simulation is going to make the overall curve more rigid and preserve the shape even better. To make the whole curve even more stiff we can change the spring stiffness value to a larger number like 1 and this will also have an effect on the curve's overall shape preservation. Of course just like before we have the option to add the global flex settings and this will change the substep count to a different value and with more substeps and iterations you will get more rigidity or rather Lucid is going to respect the parameters which you assigned a lot more. So these are just some of the new controls that we have added to the latest build of Lucid and hopefully they will give you a lot more freedom in your simulations. Thank you for watching.